each and every aspects. Okay, like for example, what are the science or technology behind blockchain? And then followed by some of the hands-on demonstrations. Few people may, may be interested on some hands-on demonstrations that how they can implement those codes and, and do some uh, demo transactions. And there will be some people who are looking for the business angle. So all of those angles will be covered. I will try my level best. Okay, and obviously the, those things, if you think, think that if something is being left out, you may ask me during question and answer session, if I know them, definitely I will try my level best to answer it. So without further delay, let me share the screen with all of you and let's start our discussions. So let me go to this uh, screen share. share. Is the slide moving? Can you see the movement of the slide? Just let me let me get a confirmation from you. Can you see the slide changes? So the Chira? slide is stagnated right now. That is a problem. I have seen often in the Zoom platform that whenever I am trying to move the slides, it is showing the stagnant. You can't see the movement, right? No, okay, so in the, uh, okay, okay. Okay, so in that case, what I am doing, I am stop uh, the slide sharing just a second. I'm just uh, proceeding one by one. Okay, so what I'm doing, instead of going with the slide sharing, I'm just clicking on one by one slide and then I am proceeding with one by one, okay? So I think that would be much better because as the slides are not moving with the, screen, uh, with, with the slide sharing mode, so it would be better to proceed in this way. So you see that nowadays the blockchain has been taken very much seriously as by the, all the community, all the tech community and the business community, because you see, we have found out several potential in terms of the cryptocurrency, efficacy of the cryptocurrency, as well as the one of the security aspects, which has also gained the attention of the, all the emerging technologists. So in the last five as we have seen, there are a lot of a lot of development in this particular field. People are working with the classical blockchain, and nowadays, even those people who are the quantum practitioners, they are also gradually thinking of the quantum blockchain because uh, you see, the quantum is the near future. By by 2035, all the physical processes nowadays we use will be saturated. So it is better to jump in the quantum paradigm. So, but before going to that. We have still time, at least a decade of time, where we can explore the classical benefit of the blockchains. So let us let us check out that uh, that what are the what are the blockchains are basically. So if you see that these blockchains are basically the chain of blocks containing some sort of the informations. Okay, so basically, uh, if you if you see that that there are the block of information these blocks are there and if you see these blocks are quite entangled with each other so what does how does this kind of entanglement happens because of the exchanging of the hash okay because in the blockchain there are three parts which will be very soon very often we will discuss that one part is the data another part is the hash of the current current data block and the another portion is the hash of the previous block so you can say that this 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 blockchains basically it gives you the uh, it is it is sort of a technology okay that permits you to do the transactions with the help of the blocks where the where where you can see the cryptographically these these blocks are maintaining the chronological order and giving you the result and ledger okay which is can be accessed by the different servers so if you see there is a there is a one of the timestamp which which plays a very very vital role because you see when the first in 1991 the group of researchers they came up with this basic concept of the blockchain so they basically introduced one important concept related to timestamp okay because you see you can't uh, you, you can't make those timestamp backdated or be forward dated so this timestamp plays a very very vital role so with the concept of the timestamp this basically this blockchain concept came up but later on that uh, that satoshi nakamoto who actually played a very very tricky role in terms of popularizing the blockchain in, in with the with the application of the blockchain in, in terms of the bitcoin so he first coined the idea of the bitcoin which actually then in 2009, actually the network has been started, although the idea was implemented in 2008. And then the first cryptocurrency stock exchange was launched. People found a lot of potential in, in, in that, that if that Bitcoin might work out, then we, we have, have a good way of mind, making money in a secure manner. So once uh, the first stock exchange was formed in 2010 and 2011, 
uh, the, then the currency, if you check out that one Bitcoin was then equal to one USD. But then you see the valuation increases over the period of time. If you, if you check out in 2013, one Bitcoin becomes equal to 100 USD. Then in 2014, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, is, is accepts Bitcoin, so which, which is the first green signal that the communities, uh, including the tech communities, who are basically gradually putting seriousness over the Bitcoin. And in 2017, we have found that one Bitcoin becomes equals to 10,000 USD. So this is a very, very positive sign. You can see that within just seven years period of time, the valuation of the Bitcoin increased 10,000 times because in 2001, it was one Bitcoin equals to one USD. In 2013, one, one Bitcoin equals to 100 USD. And in 2017, it becomes 10,000 USD. So you can see the valuation has increased 10,000 times within just six and seven period, year period of time. So that is the that is the one of the thing which has been has been struck in the mind of the technologist as well as the business person that that bitcoins are becoming becoming uh, uh, quite quite uh, effective for the for the business community now if you see that one thing which we have to understand and very 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 clearly that bitcoin is not equal to blockchain bitcoin is is after all the application of the blockchain technology Whereas blockchain is basically an underlying data structure, which can be used for many things, including the cryptocurrencies. So one we have to one thing we have to be very very clear enough that blockchain has several applications, several applications depending upon the different domains. But one of those applications is Bitcoin. Okay. Now let us proceed to the next portion. Now we let us try to understand that the that the angle of the blockchain. So blockchain is all about the, if you see, this is all about the distributed ledger, okay? Uh, which can be accessed by anyone associated with that. So once the data has been recorded in the blockchain, it becomes very, very difficult to erase that data, okay? Now, if you, if you see in the next case that, then, then one, common, one common question which comes up in our mind related to the blockchain, that is the distributed ledger. This is a very, very common question that what is the difference between a centralized ledger and the distributed ledger? Now, in case of the centralized ledger, if you see in the left-hand picture, which you can which you can, you can easily visualize, that here we can find that bank is playing a very, very vital role there because there are multiple ledgers existing in case of the centralized ledger. And bank is becoming the one of the one of the main main factor which is holding the golden record. So, for example, if kind, if if the client B must reconcile its own ledger against that particular bank, then it must convince the bank of the truth state, okay, of that particular bank ledger if the any discrepancy arises. But in case of the unlike the centralized ledger, in distributed ledger, if you see in the right hand picture, okay, this particular case, if you if you if you check out that all nodes having accessibility to this one particular ledger. So if all nodes are agreed to a protocol of determining the truth state, then each of them can they, them can be on the same page. So this kind of the applications are known as the achieving consensus. So those we will understand that what we'll try to understand that what does it mean by achieving consensus in a very simple manner in upcoming slides. So this is the basic picture. Okay, where we are, we are finding out a very, uh, very basic idea that what is the difference between a centralized laser as well as with the distributed laser. Okay, now if, if we are proceeding to the next particular slide, that if you see that, like I was mentioning, that whenever we are talking about a blockchain, so each of the blocks, what what are they comprised of? This is the very basic questions which comes in our mind. So each of the block, there will be one portion which will have comprised of the data. Then another portion is the hash of the block, okay? And the other portion is that hash of the previous block. So once, now you may ask that, that what type of the data will be there in the blockchain? It obviously depends upon the type of the blockchain. Like I told you that blockchain has several kinds of the applications and one of the most popular application is blockchain, uh, sorry, Bitcoin, okay? So within the blockchain, each of the block having three portions, one is the data, another one is hash, and the one is the hash of the previous data block. Okay, so now let us let us check out further more details. So, for example, you may have that that one common questions which comes in our mind that because we all know that the one of the popular application of the blockchain is Bitcoin. Then, within the Bitcoin block, what are the what are the things can be there? So, whenever we are making the transactions, basically the in the transactional information, they have the sender, receiver, and the amount of the coin. 
these three informations are being stored from to and about okay so within a bitcoin blockchain it has the three basic informations sender receiver and the amount of the coin okay now for example one of the question which comes in the mind that what is hash basically okay so you can you can you can check out this this has as a as a similar analogous comparisons with the fingerprint okay so that means that it has it has some unique entity for identifying a particular blocks okay so so that means that whenever you are creating a block and an unique hash is also being calculated okay so if you change the block then the hash will also change so that's the reason you can consider this particular hash as a finger fingerprint of each block okay so block wise hashes are unique if you are changing the block hash will also change okay so hash is playing a very very vital role and that's the reason you see one of the analogous uh, uh, figure wise analogous uh, presentation has been made hash with the fingerprint okay now if we go to the next slide that the third element okay third element is the block hash of the block of the uh, pre pre uh, hash of the previous block okay it basically what is the function of the hash of the previous block we have seen that each of the block uh, each of the block of the, uh, the blockchain we have the data we have the hash of the current block and we have the hash of the previous block so if, if that if we proceed like that then what is the part of this third third element where we have the information related to the hash of the previous block so it basically creates a chain it basically creates the chain if you see that's the reason we are we are naming it as a blockchain because previous block hash of the previous block is connecting to the hash of with the hash with the next block in this way we are forming a chain and that's the reason we are giving the name as the blockchain now, if you see this particular case, okay, so let's we, we discuss about a very interesting example where we have the three number of the blocks. And if you see block one, block two, and block three, and you see every cases we have three two informations, hash and previous hash. You see the block one has their hash information and they have the previous hash as a block one we are starting with. So they don't have any previous hash information because this is the beginner block. So that's the reason we call them as the genesis block. This particular block name is a genesis block because we are starting with it. So that's the reason the previous has information is tetra zero, four zero are there. Then again, you see whenever we are proceeding with the second block. So what will happen? It will have the hash information of the previous block. So it has the one Z8 is the hash information. If you see, it is connecting with it with the second block of the blockchain. And you see it is it is connected with the directed with the previous hash. Okay, and it has the now, it, it the current block having the hash information six BQ1 which is attached with the previous and uh, with, with, with the next block, which you see the block number three, okay? It has the previous hash information 6PQ1 and it has its own uh, hash information. So you see in this way, you see that all of the hash, the, the, these blocks are connected where you see the block block num block number three points to the hash of the block number two, and the block hash of the block number two is pointing towards the hash of the block number one. So in this way, you see, the current hash and the previous hash in informations are attached with each other and forming a chain a block of chains. That's the reason we are naming it as a blockchain. But remember, this first block will not have any previous hash information. That's the reason we are representing it with as zero. And that's the reason we are calling it as the genesis block. The first block is known as the genesis block. Okay. So let us proceed to the next portion. Okay, now you may say that there may be some sort of the tampering may happen, that if, if somebody is trying to do that, some, some sort of the tampering, okay? So then what will happen? So in that particular case, if, if, if some tampering is happening, just a second, oh, I wrongly clicked on, just a second. So if, if some sort of the tampering is happened, then what will happen? That is, that is our main objective, that often the question comes up in our mind that is related to the security. Okay, so in that aspect, what will happen? So we have seen that, for example, if this particular second block, if we are changing the hash information from 6BQ1 to 862Y. Now, one thing it, you, can, you can easily understand that whenever you are changing the hash information of the number two block, then what will happen? As a consequence of that hash three block, hash of the block three and the and other following blocks, we'll have to change their hash values 
because that will not match with the previous hash values because you see that the current hash value has has pointed towards the towards the third block okay in this way third block fourth block fifth block what are the existing block that are attached with each other but if you suddenly change the hash value of the block 2 then it will affect on the other other blocks okay so no longer it will remain the same blockchain okay the blockchain in that case it it it, it will emerge with a, as a new blockchain so the current blockchain will become invalid okay so now the one question which comes in our mind that that is related to the the security issue okay then if changing an hash changing a hash is if 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 it does the tampering then what how can we protect a particular blockchain so that means that hashing is not good enough in terms of preventing the tampering because nowadays we know that we have a very very fast working computers okay they can generate thousands of millions of hashes within just few seconds so with the with the help of the hash technology you can't protect blockchain okay anybody can tamper with it with with with, with and and they can generate a new blockchains with 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 few few seconds because of the those fast fast uh, acting computers so then what will be the future how can we protect it so to protect that there is there is another way there, there is a new concept that is the proof of work that is a very very effective concept apart from hash has also plays a very very important role but because of the fast working computers you can generate the hash and uh, and with that new new set of blocks and new set of blockchain with with, with within few seconds so that's the reason you require a new concept that is related to proof of work okay that plays a very very vital role in terms of the angle of the blockchain so how does this kind of the proof of work um, um, operates so it, 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 if i give you some 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 uh, idea that that basically the proof of work is is a kind of mechanism it basically slows down the overall creation of the new blockchain so if it 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 slows down the overall creation of the new blocks then then overall processing of the new blockchain with the help of those new blocks will become very very slow so it slows down the entire process now for example if one of the common thing which comes in our mind that one of the popular examples of the blockchain application in the bitcoin domain that how does then we can we can we can say that the bitcoin is safe because you see this concept of the proof of work what it will make that it it takes 10 minutes to calculate the required proof of work in case of the bitcoin okay so it will also take the 10 minutes time to generate a new block so you can understand that if it takes 10 minutes time to generate a new block then the to generate the entire blockchain will be a quite time consuming stuff and the reason and that particular reason the tampering with the blocks in bitcoin becomes very very hard because generating a new block takes 10 minutes so generating the entire new blocks for the whole blockchain will take a several several hours of time so that's the reason it makes the process very very slow and time consuming with the help of the proof of work concept so due to that it becomes very very difficult to tamper with the blockchains okay so now if you see the security of the blockchain in a holistic manner that that there are there are few few important aspects which we may cover up. first one is the creative use of hashing okay second one is the proof of work we already we have seen and there are, there is another interesting way of securing blockchain there is an another interesting way is there with the help of that we can also secure the blockchain so how can we do that so to do that just just let let, let us let us discuss with that with that emerging concept that is p2p network okay that is p2p network so instead of using the central entity to manage blockchain allows the peer to peer network where anyone can join so whenever someone joins the network what will happen that you the, the full copy of the blockchain will be given to them so now the node can use this to verify that whether everything is a, is in a proper order or not so this p2p network is is another pillar of providing security in the blockchain okay so let us let us check out that that how does how does it work so if you, for example let us let us see that what happens that whenever someone is creating a new block for example someone is creating a new block now this this block is sent to everyone in the network now what will happen then 
whenever you are creating a new block and you are sending to everyone, that each node then verifies that whether any kind of tampering has been taken place or not. So if everything checks out, okay, then each node, okay, what will happen? That each node will, if, if everything, if they, if they found that if there is no tampering, then what will happen? Then everybody will welcome that particular new block to their own blockchain. Okay, so this is how the verification of the new block is done. Then what will be the next step? Now, if whenever the, all these nodes in this particular network, in that case, whenever everybody is agreeing that, okay, there is no kind of, there is, in, there is no tampering is there, then it, this kind of the concept basically creates the consensus. Okay, so they agree, they all agree about the validity of the current blocks, current newly created block. So any kind of the tampering if happens that will be rejected by the other nodes in the network. So if anybody has to do any successful tampering, then one has to tamper with all the blocks. And then what they have to do, they have to again redo the proof of work for each of the, each of the block followed by taking control over at least more than 50% of the peer-to-peer -peer network. And that is the only way of tampering with the blocks and which is almost impossible task to do. So you can see there are three security aspects. One is hash, then proof of work, and then finally consensus, okay? So in this way, you can understand that how these blocks within the blockchains are quite, how, how these blockchains are secured. So any applications, including Bitcoins are quite secure, okay? While doing the digital transactions. So definitely, and as the researchers are going on, as, as you know, that across the globe, everybody is taking the, the blockchain security, uh, sorry, blockchain as seriously, and, 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 and all the developing countries and developed countries researchers are also working about developing the new, new, new technologies related to blockchain. And not only that, already I have mentioned that even the concepts related to quantum blockchain is also, also uh, in mind of the, of, of the physicists and the computer scientists. So definitely the blocks are also evolving. And one of the recent developments is the creation of these smart contracts, which are the collection of the simple programs stored in blockchains and can be used for the automatic coin exchange purpose. So smart contract is also is a very, very effective, effective way of doing the automatic transactions in using blockchain. So if you see the applications, other applications already, we know the Bitcoin is one of the popular application and maintaining the medical records, e-notary, collecting taxes, a lot of interesting informations we can see with the help of the blockchain. So if we just revise what about the theoretical aspects we have covered so far. So we have we have understood that what are, what are the blocks in the blockchain, okay, um, in overall what is blockchain, okay, how the digital timestamp is making the blockchain activity unique and how the concept has emerged in, in from 1991. Then we discussed about the basic historical background of the Bitcoin, okay, and how the valuation has increased over the period of time. And obviously Bitcoin not equals to blockchain, that is one of the important thing which we have, we have to keep it in our mind. Then along with that, we have talked about that over, overall the distributed laser concept using blockchain. Then <clears throat> to see what is a distributed laser, what is the difference between centralized laser and distributed laser concept we have, we have tried to understand. Then we move towards the next portion that is each of the block having three parts that is data, hash and hash of previous block. Okay, and once we have covered this particular part, then we move towards one of the simple examples of the Bitcoin block. What are the informations are there? We talked about sender, receiver and the amount of the coin is being transacted. And once we are done with that, we, we, we started to understand it, understand the very basic concepts related to hash, where we talk that uh, that hash is nothing but an analogous concepts like fingerprint, okay? So each block having their unique hash, so if the block is changed, the hash will also change, okay? Or if the hash is being changed, then the block is block will also be changed, okay? So that's the reason we, whenever we are talking about the tampering, we are not relying only on the hash technology, rather we are also providing other concepts in order to protect the particular authenticity of the blockchain, like the proof of work as well as the consensus. So if we see this, 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 uh, how we have seen that the in, in accessing the previous hash, previous hash block, uh, previous hash of uh, hash of the previous block will make a chain and create the blockchain concept. And we have discussed that the genesis block concept that 
although that every block having the hash information of the previous block, but what will happen in case of the first block? Because they don't have the previous block, that is, they are the basically the initializer. The first block is the initializer of the overall formation of the blockchain. So that's the reason their previous hash will be 000. In this way, you can represent them. So that's the reason the first block is known as the genesis block. Okay, so we have discussed on that. And then after making the discussions, we talked about the tampering of a particular block within a blockchain. So if some tampering happens, then what will happen? The hash information will be changed. So if the tampering is taking place in the second block, then what will happen? It will affect the third and the other blocks. So that means that if you want to protect the blockchain, the security of the blockchain, the hash will not be good enough because nowadays all of us know that the computers, there are fast moving computers that are there. They can create the numerous number of the hash informations for generating the new blocks within few seconds. So that's the reason we are going with the proof of work concept. So this proof of work concepts, what does it will do? It will basically slow down the overall, overall creation of the new block. So for example, in the Bitcoin, the people who are planning, who are taking the, uh, uh, the we all know that the Bitcoin is one of the popular uh, examples of the related to the blockchain. So it takes 10 minutes time to calculate the required proof of work, okay? So that's the reason you can understand that holistically it is slowing down the process. So if each block is taking 10 minutes time, new block creation, then entire blockchain, formation of the entire blockchain will take a lot of time. So due to the time consuming process, it is very much difficult to replicate it. Then we talked about the security aspects that apart from creation of the hash hashing or the proof of work, there is another way. Okay, and that particular concept is the consensus concept. So before going to that P2P network, we have discussed. So P2P network, what that will do, it will do, it will allow the new, uh, it will allow, it will make the access of the blockchain to anyone in the network. So what will happen if new, new people are entering in, in that particular case, then what will happen? He or she will get the full copy of the blockchain. Okay, and the node will be there to make the verification whether everything is order or not. So if, the, if, if, if it proceeds like that, then what will happen? Then if, for example, if a new block you are creating, first of all, each node will check that whether this block is okay or not. So if that is okay, everything is in proper place, then that particular node will allow to the new block to enter their own blockchain. Okay, so you can understand that this kind of the concepts we are calling it as the consensus. So. If, if the validity, for example, everyone, everyone agree about that validity of that particular new uh, particular new block, then it is fine. So that means that if any tampering will take place, then what will happen? The other other nodes will, will, will that particular block will be rejected by the other nodes. So that's the reason you can understand that for a successful tampering to take place within a blockchain, then one has to tamper all the blocks. And then what they have to do, they have to redo the proof of work again, okay? Followed by taking control over the more than 50% of the peer-to-peer -peer network. So it is a quite impossible task to do. So you can understand that consensus, uh, consensus plays a very, very important role in the production of the blockchain. Then what we have done, we have discussed about a new emerging concepts related to the smart con contract, okay? So it, it, is, it, it is helping the automatic transactions, uh, we also have seen several applications apart from the Bitcoin, medical maintaining medical records, the notary collecting taxes. So this is all about the uh, PPT, which I, I was going to discuss with all of you. So those who are new to blockchain, they I hope that they got some new idea. They already, the persons who know, they, they can revise their, their, their concept. So these are all my social media handles. You can join with me there. So thank you. Now it's the talk is not over. Uh, after that, we are going to going to see some of the uh, hands-on experiences because I already told you that we first covered the basic science and technology. What are the basic science and technology behind blockchain? And there may be some people from the audience who probably would love to know that how they can explore the blockchain with hands-on experiences. So definitely, we are going to incorporate that. Let me stop the screen sharing first. So then we, we should proceed to that particular portion as well. So let me share the screen. Just a second, give me a second. Now you are going to do some hands-on experiences.
I think you can now visualize it. So those who are new, just let let me just give you one one simple uh, one simple example. That uh, for example, just in in Google search Google Colab. Okay, just search Colab. So once you search it, you will you will be able to that welcome to collaboratory Google research. Okay, so simply just click on it. So you may get some of the options like here. You see, I am clicking on the blue tick button is there. New notebook. Just click on new notebook. So one new notebook will come up. Okay. So first step is very simple. Just type in Google Google Colab. Okay. Click on the top link button, Google Collaboratory. Click on it and click on new notebook button. So once the new notebook button comes up, you see that there will be. One uh, some untitled IPYNB, which is the interactive Python notebook extension, will be given there. So, for example, you can put some name like blockchain demo. You may you may keep the name like blockchain demo. Okay, just put some name like blockchain demo. So it will give you a good practice. Now you see there are two options are given there: plus code, plus text. So plus code is for adding code. Plus text is add for adding text. Okay, so you can do the both the ways. So nothing to worry about it. I will share my PPT as well as this particular notebook with all of you. I will email that to Chirag. So Chirag will share with all the participants. So you can understand that there are some portion of the text. Let me give you an overview of this particular notebook. Okay, so this is the overview of the particular notebook. Okay, so here you can see we I have added some portion of the text. Okay. As well as some code portion is also there, so you don't have to worry about it. You will get all the theoretical portions in the PPT, as well as from this particular note. Okay, along with the codes, so you don't think that these codes will be given to you and you will not be able to understand anything. That is not like that. Code and theory, everything will be there, and my contact details are with the organizers. So if you require any help, I will definitely try my best to resolve your queries. So you can drop down your queries to my uh, email ID as well. At the end of the Talk. I will definitely share my email ID as well. So, if you see this particular scenario, so building a block with Python, we are what we are doing. We have divided the entire process of building a blockchain into several steps for the better understanding purpose. So, what are those steps? You can see easily that those steps are maintained one by one mentioned here. So, for example, in step one, creating a blockchain class. In case of steps two, creating a function to build. New blocks. Okay. Step three: writing functions to create uh, new transactions and get last block. Okay. Step four: writing a function to hash the blocks. Okay. And what is the step five? We are going to step five. We are going to create a new block and sending some money, for example. So now we will discuss these steps in the following section. So what we are we going, going to we are going to do here? So creating a blockchain. Class, we will start by importing the libraries, required libraries. Okay, in Python, those who are familiar with the Pythonic platform, let me tell you that all of you know that we have to import some of the libraries. So there is nothing to worry about it. Those who are new, you will be able to see that how we are doing it step by step. Okay, and at the end of the day, what I will do, I will run entire portion of the code in the, in the blockchain demo, and I will definitely sh share that portion of the code in the comment box section. Such that all of you can incorporate it by yourself as well. Okay, so what we are going to do here? So first of all, creating. A, <clears throat> so what we'll do? We will in this case we'll we, we, what we'll do? We'll basically use the Hashleaf library for for the encryption purpose. JSON library we will use for the block formatting. Okay, and the time library for the timestamp of each block. And then what we'll do? We will be then creating a class and initializing those following variables. For example, it can be chain. So this will be an empty list to which we will be add to, which will be able to add the blocks, or quite literally we can call it as the uh, blockchain. Then, for example, pending transactions. So when the user send the coins to the others, then this this transactions what they will do? It will locate in this area until we approve and insert them into a new block. And in the new block, what we'll do? This is this will be a particular method. There we will, we, which we'll define soon, and we'll be able to utilize in order to include all the new each all including each each block within the chain. 
So let us let us take a look at the code section. So let me scroll it down a bit so that all of you can have some idea that what we are going to do here. So importing the required libraries, you see, importing Hashlib, then importing JSON, then what we are doing from time, import time, then what we are doing, we are creating a simple blockchain class. So class blockchain object, then we are we are defining the initializing of it. Self dot chain has been defined. Then self dot pending transactions. And finally, what we are doing, self dot new block, where we are putting the previous hash. Okay. So we have we have given some in, uh, hash informations related to that. Okay. So once you we we we, we just done with our portions initializing for example importing the libraries or creating the new blockchain class then what you will do you will there there is a sign you see that the run cell button is given there you can click on the run cell button and your entire code portion will run so for your confidence purpose what i am doing i am just showing you how it will run okay so i am going copy pasting it in the new block section you see that i am copy pasting it and what i am doing i am clicking on the run cell button so you see that it is moving and once the execution will be done if it is okay if there is no error you will be able to see some tick will appear you see a successful installation of the libraries creation of the blockchain class is done you see some green tick has been given there in the left hand side so let me stop the screen sharing and send you this portion of the code in your comment box section okay so i'm sending it so you can try it out by yourself as well okay Again, I am going back to the screen share option. So I believe that all of you will be able to run it successfully. So what we will do now, we will move to the next portion a bit. Now what we are doing, we are going to discuss about the explanation portion. Okay, so in the explanation portion, we have seen that in the above snippet of the code, all you can see the explanation is also given there. Whenever you will, you will be able to execute all those results or reproduce all those results by yourself, then if you find somewhere difficulty, there's a reason this explanation section also being added there that you yourself can put some query and read this text portion, you will be able to understand it easily. Okay, so for example, in the above snippet of the code, we have seen that we have imported the required libraries. Okay, then what we have done, we have created the blockchain class where we have initialized the different variables, okay, which we have desc described earlier. So then what we are doing now, writing a function to construct a new block. Now, now, for example, that we have initialized an empty chain and let us begin with inserting the blocks into it. So what we'll do, we will then define the JSON object, which will have the following properties. For example, it will have index, okay, which will take the length of the block and adding one to it. Then what we'll do, we will use this as a reference of the individual individual block, for instance, Genesis block, which will have the index one because we are starting with the Genesis block. All of you know the first block is the Genesis block. Okay, then what will happen? Timestamp will be there with the help of the time module. We will, we will stamp the block when it is created such that nobody can backdate it or the forward date it. Okay, actual maintaining of the time of the block creation will be there. Then users can also check that when the transactions was confirmed on chain, then the transactions will be there. Any transaction that has been in pending list will be displayed in the new block. Proof, this property comes from the miner, okay, who thinks they have found a valid proof or or okay and then from for example previous hash will be there all of you know that apart from the hash previous hash is also another important component of the each block of the blockchain so a uh, hashed um, version of the recent uh, approved block will be there and once we add the above properties to the new block then what will happen we will include them in the chain so initially we empty the pending list of the transactions and then what we are doing we are adding new blocks to the self dot chain and returning it right so let us under, try to understand this particular phenomena with the with the following code, coding portion so here what we are doing here we are basically creating a new block listing key or the q hello pr of the block informations in the json object okay then what we'll do we'll reset the list of the pending transactions and append the newest block to the chain okay so where we can see that we are defining a new block so where what are the parameters we are taking self the proof and the previous hash we are keeping it none then the block what we are what are the components we are adding so we are adding for example index we are adding timestamp we are adding transactions we are adding proof of transactions then we are keeping the previous has informations okay and then after defining the self pending transactions and self dot chain change dot append the block 
we are returning the block. Okay, so simple def defining overall the functions related to the block. Now let me just show you that how I can run it here as well. So what I am doing, I am clicking on the plus code button. You see, there will be two pop-up will come up. Plus code and plus text. So plus text will be adding up the text portion. Plus code will be adding up the code portion. So what I'm doing, I am pasting it here and I'm just running it. So like the earlier case, if your code is perfect, it will run. So you will be able to successfully able to define the new block. Okay, like the way we have defined the new block here. Also, let me send it to your comment box section as well, such that all my respected participants can also be able to reproduce it, those who are interested to reproducing it by their own. So I think now it will be easier for you as well. So we are done with the second portions. Okay, so let me let me back to my original notebook. So now what we have seen that, again, you see the explanation portion has been added there. So those who will practice it at their home, they will get all the supports because all the necessary theory portion along with the code has been mentioned in this notebook. What you have to do, you have to just put, import this particular portion of the code in your Google Colab. And once you will be able to use that, it will run successfully. So in the above snippet of the code, we have found, we have defined a particular new block functions and have included all the properties we have described earlier, okay? And we, what we have done, we have emptied the pending list of transactions and adding added the new block to the chain. So at last, what we have done, we have been able to generate a new block there. So writing the functions to create new transactions or getting the last block, what we are now will do, will now let us include some of the list of the transactions in the program because we have seen that whole program is quite pointless without one, right? So let us de first define the returning of the block as we have done recently. So after that, what we'll do, we'll create the method to represent a new transaction. So in that case, what will happen? This mode methodology will consist of the most significant three variables. One is the sender, another one will be the recipient, another will be the amount. Like in case of the Bitcoin, we have discussed that in the PPT all of you have seen that in Bitcoin, what are the informations we are discussing? Three informations will be there. One is the sender, another one is the receiver, another one is the amount. Okay, so without these variables included in the transactions, users will not be able to spend, earn, or buy anything, right? So with, with the newly produced cryptocurrency. So remember that these transactions are oversimplified and do not reflect the thing one might find in the true cryptocurrency. So for your understanding purpose, some simple transactional demo has been given there. So you, what we'll do now, we will include the transaction JSON object to pull the pending transactions, okay? So this will stay in case of the indetermination in of the state while, uh, while a new block is being mined or for example, adding to the blockchain. So as a purpose of the future reference, we'll return the index of the block to which new transaction will be about to add it. Okay, so let us, let us check a very simple demonstration related to it. So what we are going to implement here, so searching the blockchain for most recent block. So we are defining the last block, okay? And then what we are doing after doing the def last block self return self dot chain minus one, okay? Because you see in Python, those who are aware of the Python in the last element of an array, accessing last element of an array or the capturing the last transaction, what we do, we basically put minus one as an index, okay? And, and after doing that, adding a transactions with relevant info to the, uh, to the block pool, list of pending transactions, what we are doing, we are defining new transactions. Well, what are the parameters? Self, the sender, the recipient, the amount. Okay, and under the transactions, what we are defining? Sender, we are defining recipient, we are defining the amount. Then what we are doing, we are implementing the self pending transactions dot append the transactions and return self dot last block index plus i okay so this is the way we are we are successfully defining the overall trans transactional demo here so we what i am doing i am simply reproducing the result in my demo window blockchain demo window okay so again you see whenever i am going to run the code you see both options are given there plus text plus code as we are only reproducing the coding portion we will only click on the plus code button okay so plus code button we have hit on that button and we have pasted the entire code. And what I am doing, you see this run cell, again, we are following the same step and we'll run it, you see, successfully the code has run. You see this particular blue tick, sorry, green tick has been given there. Okay, so this is indicating your code portion is correct.
if some error has appeared then some uh, red link uh, color has been appeared and it, which was indicating your uh, erroneous coding portion so basically we have done with it now again you see the the basically the explanation portion has been added with that so what we have done in the above snippet of the code we have defined the block entire method under the last block function so which is returning the most recent block which we have added earlier right so here what is the new thing we have defined as a part of the function that is a new transaction function right so within which we have defined the entire json object okay so javascript object notion json stands for javascript object notion so that object as the transaction as the transaction and included the entire addresses of the sender recipient as well as the part of the amount right because as we have seen that for any successful transactions we have to, to keep three things in your mind one is the sender another one is the receiver another one is the amount so we have done or we have incorporated all those portions successfully okay so once you are being able to do that then what we have to do we can we have added this particular json object to the pending transactions and return the last block now writing a particular hash to um, i mean particular function to hash that, that that whenever we are using this particular block so what we are doing we are putting some cryptographic portion in the programming so as we know that bitcoin and many blockchains are utilizing the SHA-256 encryption hash function to pro provide the optimum performance in terms of the cryptographic application, which can accept some sort of the string, text string, which is basically Unicode value. And then what they will do, they will spit it out as a 64 character long encrypted string. So in a blockchain, in the text, we have seen that we encrypted and, and considered a particular block, for, a, for instance, the encrypted string or hash of the blockchain genesis which is a genesis block may appear like in a following manner if you see okay so we have seen that the blockchains are considered as the tamper proof as every block consists of a copy of the previous hash of the block and as a new hash is derived from the last block okay we cannot change it at any aspect of a block without altering uh, every single hash in front of it. Already we have discussed all those things in, a, in, the, in our discussions in PPT. All those things are there as an explanation of the coding portion. But you know, whenever you know the theory, it becomes easier for you to implement the code and understand that what are the steps we are incorporating. Those simple steps has been explained here again. So if you go through the PPT and corresponding this this particular portion of the uh, portion of the notebook, you, the every every portion of the blockchain will be will become crystal clear to you, including Bitcoin portion. So some suppose that someone have downloaded the uh, Bitcoin blockchain to their computer and wrote, okay, Satoshi sends Alex, okay, seven two three six triple zero bitcoins. Okay, now you see that into this particular Genesis block and broadcasted this into the into the new bot bitcoin network and claiming them that he is a secret blinger so however as soon as any self respective miner compares their current copy of the blockchain and especially has value stored in those block so with this copy of the chain they will notice that he is a liar and refusing to validate it and run him off of the network so self claiming will not be the, do the serve, serve the purpose rather you have to particularly validate that what are the actual valuation. So what we will do, we will define the method that accepts the new block with and, and, and alter the key value pairs into the strings. And we will then, what we'll do, we'll convert the strings into Unicode, okay? Which will pass the SHA-256 method from the Haslib library and create a new hexadecimal string from returning those values. So we will then, what we'll do, we will we'll return a particular new hash there. So let us try to understand the same thing by using some snippet of the code. So let us, what we are doing here, we are, we are receiving one block, turning it into the string, and then what we are doing, turning it into a Unicode, okay? So after receiving the block, we are converting into a string, and then we are converting into a Unicode because SHA-256 encryption we are using, so it can convert the block into string, and then we are converting the string into Unicode for hashing purpose. Now you see, hashing with the 250 to SHA-256 encryption, what will happen then translating the entire Unicode into a new hexadecimal string. So def def definitely we have to define the hash function here, okay? So hash function, two parameters will be there, self and the block, okay? Then what will happen? We have to define the string object, Okay, JSON dumps where, where the, the block will be the first 
uh, parameter, the sort key is true will be the second parameter, and then block string, string of object, string object encode. Okay, we have defined then raw hash with the help of the hash lib dot sh 256 encryption method where the block string is the your parameter. Then hash hash, hash we have defined with the raw hash dot x digest function. Okay, and then return hash hash. Okay, so we have created the hash function here successfully. Okay, and now what I'm doing, I am just showing you that how, how, how you have to run it in your uh, notebook. So you see, we are clicking on it and you see it is running successfully. I am sending this portion of the code in your comment box section. Just make sure that you are being able to run this portion. Okay. So already, already I have shared it in your comment box section as well. So we, we have we have incorporated this particular um, HSX portion of running it. Now what we have done it, the explanation portion already have explained it, that in the above snippet of the code, what we have done, we have defined the hash function and accepts the new block and return them into the string. And then what we have done, we have we have converted into the Unicode for hashing purpose. And then we have used the two SHA256 function for the in providing entire encryption and then translating the Unicode into a hexadecimal string. So entire portion has been explained there. And now what we have done, this this what all operations, whatever we have incorporated here for showing you a demo transactions with the help of the Bitcoin, entire portion has been defined in a single chunk of code, okay? So this particular code comprised of whatever we have incorporated so far. So if you if you successfully able to run this portion of the code, let me show you how to do it. You will be able to see the outcome, okay? So for example, I am, I am just incorporating all the codes into a single, single block of the notebook. So once, and now see the code has run successfully and you see this kind of output will come up where you see the print genesis block, blockchain dot chain. So genesis block, you see, it will have the index one. Okay, this is the first block with the proper timestamp has been given there at which time it has been generated. Transaction proof 100, previous hash, every details has been given there. Okay, then index two, their transaction, timestamps, transaction, all that you see center is satoshi the way we have defined recipient is alex the amount is 10 btc 10 bitcoin okay again you see the the, the sender alex recipient satoshi amount 2 btc send sender satoshi recipient james amount 10 btc okay proof okay the proof information 10123 with the previous has information every details are given there again you see in index 3 Corresponding timestamp has been given there. Transactions and details has been given there. Sender Alex, recipient Lucy, amount two BTC. Sender Lucy, recipient Justin, okay, amount one BTC. Sender Justin, okay, recipient Alex, amount one BTC. Okay, along with the proof one zero three four and the previous as information are given there. So along with the different, you can see the different block wise. We have started with the Genesis block. Then we, 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 have, we have seen that following following blocks, index two, index three, we have seen the corresponding timestamp detail of the transactions, every detail you can generate. I am also sending you the code in your comment box section. All of you are requested to reproduce it. Okay, I think this is a huge block of the code. You may not be able to see in a, in a, in a single, uh, single, uh, single, um, uh, let me let me check okay so as i have suspected that every uh, each of the code portion will not appear there so i have to send it in several intervals it will not be possible to send it in a single interval let me just just a second let me send you the entire portion of the code in several uh, steps just a second because there are some character limit in the comment box section so you will not be able to access entire portion of the code I have to uh, send it with the help of the multiple attempt.
let me check how many portion it has delivered here return block append b block return block okay searching Okay, so some portion of the code I have sent again. So let me check how, uh, how much it has delivered. Okay, so up to defining the hex block, 10 BTC, okay, just a second transaction. So now I have sent the entire portion of the code. Okay, so you will be able to run this portion, I mean, uh, quite easily, just check it out. So once you are being able to run it, let me let me share the screen. You will be able to see the following kind of output. Okay, so in the output, you will be able to see the Genesis block, index one, okay, timestamp with the transaction information, proof and previous has information index two, transaction information timestamp information proof and previous has index three transaction information timestamp okay proof and the previous has information in this way you'll be able to incorporate it so this particular notebook i will share with all of you so nothing to worry about it so there what we have covered up so we have first of all we build we made a blockchain with the help of python programming so there what are the steps we have followed in step one we have created a blockchain class in steps two we have created a function to build the new blocks in step three what we have done we have we have made a writing of a function to create new transactions and get the last a block and then in step four what we have done we have uh, we have wrote a function uh, to hash the block and step five we have created the new blockchain and been able to send some money we have incorporated all those steps quite successfully and now what we have done here if you see in the first step you see we have imported all the libraries and we have created the blockchain class okay we in the next step what we have done we have created a new block okay and in the next step, what we have done, we have created, uh, uh, we, have, we have, for searching um, um, the blockchain for the recent, most recent block, 
where that's the reason we have defined the last block function. And then we, what we have done, we have added a new function named as new transactions to define the transactions which are relevant to the, the block pool. Then what we have done, we have created uh, a hash function, okay? The receiving one particular block, then what will be done? It will be converted into a stream, then it will be converted into a Unicode, and the hashing will be protected with the help of the SHA 256 encryption. So we have done that particular step, okay? And finally, we have incorporated all those steps with a single block of code. So this is the particular block of code, which I have sent to you with the help of the multiple Latin, because you see in the comment box of the uh, Zoom, we, we, we can't send the entire code because there is there are some character limitations. So that's the reason I have to send it in, in, in tries attempt. In a single attempt, it was not possible to deliver. So we have initiated the blockchain class in the above snippet of the code, and we have performed some sort of the transactions and printed them for the users. Okay, so successful creation of the blockchain and successful transactions has been made, uh, demo transactions of cryptocurrency has been made with the help of this particular notebook. Okay, so all of you have learned today about the basics of the blockchain with the help of the PPT, which I have explained all the theoretical concepts, including Bitcoin. And then I have shown you the theoretical uh, coding demonstration, experimental demonstration, where we have, uh, we have created a blockchain class. We have made some transactions, new blockchain transactions with the help of the cryptocurrency. And all of the steps has been incorporated successfully, as all of you have seen. The, if you can uh, put the code in the right place and run them, all those are the runnable codes. So definitely I'm going to email you this particular notebook as well. Within this notebook, all the necessary theory and the coding portions have been added there. So nothing to worry about it. All of you will be able to have some good hands-on experiences with the help of this notebook. Those who have already incorporated with me, they already have got some outcome and all of you will be able to experience it, uh, it quite easily, I believe, if you follow all the instructions given in the notebook. So I just repeat one particular steps which you have to follow simply for those who have not been able to incorporate it, all those results. So I'm just again showing you Google Colab, just search. Google Colab, okay, once you have been able to search it, you see this particular Colab collaboratory will appear. Click on it, go there, Click on the new notebook section. Okay, here you see the blue button has been given there, new notebook, just click on it. Okay, and you will be able to appear on a new notebook. Okay, if you want to, for example, upload the existing notebook, like for example, you want to use my notebook. So what will happen once the screen appears in front of you, you see, click on the file button, you will be able to upload notebook option is there. You can click on upload notebook button, you can upload this particular notebook named blockchain using Python. Okay, and then you just reproduce the results. Or if you want to write your own code, you see plus text and plus code button is given there. Plus text button, if you click, you will be able to write some text. Using the plus code button, you will be able to write some code. Okay, and you can change, give some name there, like I have given here, you see, blockchain demo. Okay, to show you some demo of the code. Or for example, in this original notebook, I have given the name blockchain using Python. So in this way, you can give some name. Okay, so incorporate all those results and let me know your feedback. Let me write down my email ID in your comment box section so that all of you when you able to. Okay, so Lalit said I will I will share the notebook with all the organizers. So please do not worry. Okay, I will definitely share it. And also I am sharing all the necessary um, necessary link of my GitHub GitHub link where I am gradually uploading all the code. So it's not only about blockchain. Those who are taking enthusiastic and want to learn new technologies related to AI, ML, deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, reinforcement learning, all those codes I'm gradually uploading uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in, in my GitHub account. So you can easily access it from, from there as well. So my email ID, if you require any help, I am, I am sharing my details, okay, one by one. So kindly take a note of it. I am just requesting all the respected participants to kindly take a note of all the details, okay, which I'm sharing here. So this is my email ID. Okay, you can contact me here anyway. Anyway, no, no, no. There, madam. There are other ways where which you may use. I am just showing one of the demonstration in Pythonic platform. You may use other languages as well. Okay, I am just showing it with the help of Python. There are other modes are there where where you can explore blockchain as well. So just a second, let me give my GitHub GitHub account link as well. I will definitely upload this notebook in my GitHub as well. Okay, and we'll share with uh, 
the with the organizers such that all of you can get the access so this is my github link you can you can follow me in github okay i am gradually uploading all the study materials for all my respected participants so students and all the interested learners can can remain benefited from it and <clears throat> Also, let me share my YouTube channel link as well, because all my talks I gradually upload there, such that all my respected participants can remain benefited if they require any help. So in future, they may access them easily and get the benefit of it. Sir, I have sir, I have shared my my email ID. Kindly, kindly check, kindly check it in the comment box section. Already, I have shared my email ID, so you can email me anytime, no problem. This is my YouTube channel link. So I have already I have shared my uh, GitHub account link, my email ID, my YouTube channel. Also, uh, recently I have started to write the blog regarding the different technological aspects. Okay, so you may follow me there as well in Medium. So I am sharing that particular link as well. I believe that this resource will, will help you to be aware about the new technologies, what are the career perspective related to it and how you can explore them in your business. I'm gradually making them uh, uh, one by one, making them available for the public domain. So all of you, I believe that this will help everybody um, um, uh, who are the key learner of this particular domain, all the emerging technology domain, not only in blockchain, but other emerging technology domain that will be um, it will be quite helpful. Thank you, Vivek sir, uh, for 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 your precious feedback. Thanks a lot, Vivek sir. <clears throat>